Let's break it. After the last video, uh, Brendan contacted me and said, John, you know, you really should elaborate a little bit more on how uh, the IF uh, carrier, the 455 kilocycles, you know, how that's eliminated, go a little bit more on this, how it's eliminated to ground here, and then, you know, what really happens to the audio that, that is riding on it also. And he said, uh, just elaborate on a little bit more, cover a little more in depth. He said, I don't think you were exactly clear. He's probably right, no doubt about it, so that's exactly what I'm going to do. But let's go back to the converter. You remember? When you take what's coming out of the local oscillator and you mix it in the converter with what's coming in on the antenna, you get an intermediate frequency that uh, is called intermediate frequency at this point. It's no longer uh, 600. Let me get the piece of paper to kind of show you here. It is no longer 650 AM. It is now 455 kilocycles. A carrier with audio, modulated by the audio. So it goes from a, being called a radio station frequency, I guess, to an IF right here. It gets transferred out of the plate of this tube into the primary, over to the secondary, magnetically coupled. Comes across and gets beefed up right here in this intermediate frequency amplifier. It's still too low. It's very weak when it hits the antenna, especially if you live miles away from the station. Very, very tiny. It gets beefed up here, but it also gets beefed up here again in this amplifier. Then... It comes over, it goes into the primary here, it gets coupled across to the secondary here. This is the second intermediate frequency transformer. And at this point, that carrier, that 455 kilocycles, is eliminated. We don't need it anymore. <clears throat> so it normally comes, gets coupled across, the 455 kilocycles comes down here, rushes through this capacitor because this capacitor was designed to let it go through quickly. Very small capacitor, 400 picofarads. The carrier comes down, comes across, boom, right to ground. It eliminates the carrier we no longer need. That's a that's a good little thing right there. That capacitor is pretty, pretty important. Now, in order to get automatic volume control, the, the audio also goes down here. Now, the audio is 2 hertz up to 20,000 hertz. Why 2 hertz to 20,000 hertz? That, that is the frequency, that is the hearing range of the human ear. Anything below or above, we can't hear it. So that, that when we, anytime somebody ever talks audio, they're talking 2 hertz to 20,000 hertz. I don't care what it is. It is the audio frequency, the audio this, the audio that. It's 2 hertz to 20,000 hertz because we can't hear anything else. Anything above or below. So it, that, that audio comes down, goes through this resistor, comes across. The audio itself, the 2 hertz to 20,000 hertz, goes through this capacitor to ground because this capacitor right here is designed to allow that to happen. However, the voltage, the voltage is still there. The audio is gone here, but the voltage comes across, comes up through here uh, to this control grid through this first, uh, this secondary uh, coil of the first IF here. And the voltage also comes across, comes up here, and goes into the control grid here. And that's how we get our automatic volume control. As the level here goes up and down, it also goes up and down in this control grid here and this control grid here because that's what's coming down these lines, okay? But without the audio, because the audio gets dumped right here. Or as uh, Brendan says, it gets filtered there. Well, it, get, it gets eliminated, okay? <laughs> All right, let's go back over here to, to this uh, 455 kilocycles. If I can get this camera to focus again, 455 kilocycles. Comes through this capacitor real, real quick like a bunny. And it goes to ground, and our good friend Buzz, 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 1151, he said, Hey, John, what happens if that capacitor opens up? What happens to the 455,000 cycle carrier then? Where does it go? That's a good question. And he also said, Hey, uh, what, uh, what does the carrier sound like? Now, he asked these two questions in the last video. And... Uh, so I said, oh, that's a good question too. What does the carrier sound like? And what happens if this capacitor is open? Well, what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and we're going to cut this line right here going into that K1 brown block that's on the uh, circuit board. You all remember that one. If you don't, go back to the last video. You'll see it. 
We're going to cut this line right here, which will stop that carrier, that, that IF carrier, from going through this capacitor because it can't get there. We're going to stop that thing. It won't be able to go to ground. So what's going to happen to it? Well, I'll tell you what. Let's go ahead and cut this thing and see what happens. So how do I disconnect pin 3 on that couplet? Well, there's the pin right there. I remove the solder, then I cut through the eyelet and then peeled the whole thing back. So it'll be real easy to put back when the time comes. I can put roll it right back down and re-solder it, okay? And uh, so what we're going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and hook a, a gator wire from that pin right there over to this pin over here. That'll, that'll put it back into the circuit, the couplet. And then we're going to turn on the old radio and then we're going to remove the gator wire from this pin which will be the same as cutting the wire and removing it from the circuit. This is the pin we're removing that keep, you know, that allows that uh, IF carrier to go to ground. Won't be able to do that once I uh, remove that gator wire. So let's get that set up. Okay, here it goes. Let's turn up the volume. At the University of Illinois. Of course, I had the military back to me up. I now let's go ahead and disconnect. Here we go. Just a bunch of background noise is all you got. Just a bunch of crap there. Still plays. Alright, this is what's going on here. You know, the carrier can't go this way because we have it cut. So actually, believe it or not, the carrier and the audio, that's, that you know, you already know the audio. The 2 to 20 kilohertz is coming across here and it goes to ground here. Well, a lot of the uh, carrier is also going through that capacitor. That capacitor right there is big enough to handle it. And you say, well, why doesn't it do it all the time? Because it's easier the way the designers built it. You know, it'll take the path of least resistance. The carrier will come down and go through here a whole lot quicker and easier than it actually comes down and tries to go through this capacitor. Okay? So what's really happening here is the carrier is coming out of the secondary here and it can't go this way, it is going this way, but it's also going down through the volume control. These are just like little roads, okay? The carrier comes down, goes to the volume control, comes up here, up through this capacitor, and into the control grid of the AVC, of the detector, AVC, and audio frequency amplifier. And it is doing something to the audio. You know, it seemed to me I should have got a lot more noise out of the uh, speaker if that, you know, if that uh, intermediate frequency uh, carrier of 455 kilocycles could not get to ground this way. It should have been a lot noisier. So I contacted uh, Brendan, you know, since this is new to me, I've never had to disconnect anything like this before. And I said, what's the story? I should have got more noise. He said, well, you won't get more noise. And then he told me why, and it was like, well, duh, I should have known. <laughs> why did I not know that? The normal hearing range, I stated earlier, of the human ear is two, uh, two cycles, or two hertz, up to 20,000 hertz. 455,000 hertz is beyond the hearing range of the human ear. That's why we didn't hear a whole bunch of noise coming out of that speaker from that carrier. Uh, but you know, I did. I took, but I said, you know, there is some noise. He says, yeah. What's really happening is since there's no place for this to go, no place for the uh, carrier to go because you disconnected it right here. There's no place. It can't get to ground. It just sort of goes around wherever it can. And what it's doing is it's interfering with the audio frequencies. It's interfering with the audio. And I just told you the audio is two hertz up to twenty thousand hertz. So that's why we didn't get a whole lot of noise. <clears throat> However, we did get some white noise slash hash in the background, okay? The audio is still going through, keep that in mind. But the, the, uh, the carrier is just kind of messing around with it. So that makes perfect sense to me now. Should make perfect sense to everyone else. <laughs> I hope. Today we're going to cover just a little bit more about that uh, silver mica disease or silver migration or SMD, whatever you want to call it. I had forgotten that uh, I had uploaded a video back in 2009 of uh, a Transoceanic H500 that I was restoring at that time. 
And after I got it all done, got the thing all taken care of, you know, all the wires changed and the bad components and got it looking good all the way, painted chassis, everything. I don't know if I painted the chassis. But anyway, it looked real good when I got done. <clears throat> it was only, it was one of my early restorations. I turned it on and it had silver mica disease. Now that silver mica disease that we're talking about down in the bottom of this, of this uh, can, and I think there was another can over here. Anyway, here's what it sounded like. I wanted everybody to see it. I posted this to the antique radio forum. And I'm glad I did because now you guys will also get to hear it. It'll sound almost exactly the way I, I made it happen in the last uh, radio video. So here we go. Here's what, here's what silver mica disease sounds like most of the time. Before we sign off today, I want you to know one more. We've only got one more section really to go through here. I'll try to answer any questions you might have about that thing I just described here. But we only have one more section to go through, uh, and that's the output stage uh, right here. We'll be coming out of this K1 going into the, uh, uh, the output tube, and then from there into the out audio output transformer and out through the speaker. We'll cover that. And uh, one more thing I want you to know was once we get it all done, once we've gone through the entire thing, uh, I'm going to make one last video. And the last video will be starting one more time. It'll be from beginning to end, nonstop. We'll start with the uh, plug in the wall. We'll come in. We'll go through the power supply and out through the 110, 90 volt source. And we'll go through the we'll go through the uh, the heaters. Then we'll come up here and we'll come in on the antenna again and we'll go through each of these tubes, each of these transformers, da 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 da, da all the way out to the end. And that'll end the series. I think maybe, maybe two more videos. And depending on how many questions people might have, it could be three. But right now I'm looking at two more. So until next time, I hope I've cleared up a little bit more uh, per, per Brendan's desires and mine, actually. Uh, of what actually happens to the carrier once it comes out before the IF carrier once it comes out of that uh, secondary on that secondary that second intermediate frequency transformer so until next time uh, this is John